What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Immersive Engineering. Now in today's episode we're going to be having some fun messing around with the Chemical Thrower. It's pretty much supposed to be a weapon from Immersive Engineering, but I'm pretty sure even the worst Diamond Sword could still do more damage. But it's really cool because we get to shoot out flaming creosote oil at stuff. So we're going to be making that and making a whole setup to fill it up using creosote oil and all that fun stuff. So there is a lot that we need to do and it's all going to be done on the second floor, which I just started putting in. I didn't actually finish it, but there's really no need to right now. Uh, eventually I will and I'll try and make it look a little bit nicer than just like a blocky floor. Um, but for now this should be fine. So like I said, there's a lot that we actually need to do. So if we look in the engineering manual, we are going to be using the bottling machine. And this pretty much just fills things with different fluids that you input into it. So obviously we're going to put creosote in there, and then it kind of works like a conveyor belt that carries it around the center, fills it up, and then outputs it to a chest. So it's pretty easy to make, and you can see that it says it will also accept items designated uh, as fluid containers like the mining drill or a jerry can, and the chemical thrower is also included in that. So we're going to be making that first, and then we obviously need to make the chemical thrower itself, which is pretty easy to make. And then we are probably going to make this focused nozzle upgrade, which allows it to have a longer range and decreased spread. And then obviously we're going to need to make the engineering workbench along with that so that we can add the parts together. So instead of just talking about it, we should probably jump into it. So I'm going to have to get a lot out of here. We're probably going to use up all of our iron. We need a lot of steel, a lot of copper. And I think that should be it for now. Actually, we're going to need some Electrum, too. That should be good. And I don't think we need anything from up there. So now we get to dive into the crafting bench, where we're going to be doing a lot of work. So first things first, we need to make some more of this steel scaffolding, because we are going to need, I believe, five of them. Uh, so we do have to make a little bit extra, which is unfortunate, because it does use up a lot of steel to make a full set, um, assuming you use up all your steel fences. Obviously, I kind of wasted some over here, but it's perfectly fine. So now that we have those, we're going to need to make one more light engineering block. And that's pretty easy to make, but we need to make some of these. So two of these, and there we go. So that should be fine. We actually only need two, but we have one left over. So we have three. Still going to have one left over after this. We have the conveyor belts that we're going to need. So that's actually all we need to set up the bottling system. And now we actually need to make the chemical thrower itself. So I did forget to grab some of the wood that we have over here. We're going to need to make a little bit more treated wood, but that is okay because right now I have some metal barrels that I've been filling up with creosote. So we can just slap this down right here for now and get some buckets out. We're actually not going to need that much because we're going to need sticks. So we can get a lot of sticks just from these eight treated wood planks right here. So there we go. And we're going to need to use these to make the handles. Going to need two of these or the grip for the handle, I guess. So we need two of those, and then we need to make a heavy engineering block, which is actually going to take a decent amount of steel, but we need to make two pistons first, which should be easy. Oh, you know what? I didn't grab any redstone. Okay, so we need redstone and lapis, too. I forgot about that. So we need to grab some redstone and some lapis. Man, my inventory is getting so full. Okay, so here we go. Got to get both of these pistons. And there we go. Then we get to, I believe we get to make two of these. And then, where did it go? Chemical thrower, heavy engineering block. So we need some electrum for that and just some steel. So should be good to go now. Steel around the outside. And what am I forgetting right now? Where are those two parts right there? Okay, so we got two heavy engineering blocks. So we should be good to go, actually, when it comes to making this. Actually, no, no, we need to make the pressurized air tank. So we have the buckets that we're going to need for that. Uh, I should probably actually make one more because we have two buckets of creosote right now. So we have that, and we need to make one more of these. And we should be good to go now to make the chemical thrower. Got that. And what are we missing? Oh, you know what? We're missing another bucket. Okay. Now we should be good to make it. What? You know, we'll just manually place things in there then. And on the off chance that I'm actually missing something, we will know what I am missing. Okay, so I guess I really wasn't missing anything, but <laughs> whatever. So you can see that this has a nice little gauge on the bottom that tells you that it's empty, and it can become full. It only holds two uh, 2,000 millibuckets, I think. 
until you upgrade it, in which case it holds 4,000. But it looks really cool. If we hold F5, looks awesome. Yeah. Um, and then there's also an option that if you shift right click, you can see that a little flame comes on down at the little indicator. And that means that it's going to light any flammable gas in it on fire. And creosote is, er, not gas, liquid. Uh, creosote is flammable, though. So it's awesome. We get to light things on fire with it. So now that we have that, I actually think we can start setting things up upstairs. Now we can grab this too because I'm actually going to be using this in the setup. So we can come up here and I decided I'm going to run the power up here just over here on this side. So we're going to have to throw down a medium voltage wire connector and we're actually going to have to put one right down here too. So I think we can put one right there and then right there. And we're going to have to go downstairs to connect it and to make some more wire. So I think this should be enough because we actually don't need to run it that far. So we can connect it from right over here to right here and then from down here and bring it upstairs. So you can go right there. And now we can run it to the bottling machine and that should probably go right over here. We are going to be putting the or is it the coke oven up here too just because obviously this is what's getting us the creosote. So this can go hmm we can just put it right here for now. I'll move it over if I need to to get some more space, but it can go here for now. And we just got to get our hammer out. There we go. So everything should be good here. We can actually start making some cold coke just to get some extra creosote. Uh, these two barrels are completely full right now, and this one obviously we can fill up later. But now we need to set up the canning machine, and or not the canning machine, the bottling machine. So if we open this, we can take a look at how to set it up. Uh, whoops, I went back too far. Where is it? Right there. Okay, so I actually do know how to set this up. It's pretty simple. So we need the engineering blocks out. And it looks like we're going to have to sleep in a minute because I, I don't know if mobs can spawn up here. I actually don't think they can, so we should be okay. But I think we want to set it up probably over on this wall right here. So we might end up moving this just right over here in the corner. But we're going to set this up. We can do it right, we'll move it over once. We'll do it right here. And I think we want it possibly one away from the wall. Yeah, actually, I think we do want it one away from the wall. So I'll show you guys why in a second. Uh, so we can do it like this and go like that. And then we need light engineering block, light engineering block. And now we got to get the conveyor belts out. Now, one thing that it does note that is very important is that you need to have the conveyor belt in the right order. So it, let's read where it says that. Uh, the movement of... It does state in here somewhere that the conveyor belts are really important. Oh, right here. It says the structure is created as shown above. The direction of the conveyors is important, but can be mirrored. So it is important that they're actually going the correct way. So it is one going that way, two going this way, and two going this way. Now, when you get the engineering hammer out, you can't actually click anywhere on it. You have to click right on the center, or the center conveyor at least. So there we go. It actually makes a really cool looking kind of like conveyor setup. Uh, it does look a lot different than when we had it before. But what I want to do now, and the reason I have it one away from the wall, is because we input fluids right here if we want to automatically input them. And we do want to automatically input them. So we're going to take these metal barrels and I actually think we're only gonna run two for now but we're gonna have this fluid pipe right here and we're gonna put down one metal barrel and obviously this one has creosote in it we can take a look if we hold a barrel out that it's got 12,000 millibuckets and obviously it's not outputting into it right now because it would start going down so we need to get above this let's get just some cobblestone out so we're gonna get above this get our engineering hammer out and this is what we want on the top because we're going to stack another one on top of this. So we do want it having the input at the top and then we're going to shift right click and now it's got an input on the bottom and we're going to shift right click again and it should start losing. Okay, so now we have the output going out the bottom. And if you guys didn't know, you can shift right click with the hammer to alter the direct opposite side of anything uh, just so that, you know, if you can't access the direct or the face directly, you can do it from the other side for cases like this, I guess. And then we need to go up one more and do the same thing for the other barrel. So I'm going to put that down up here and do the same thing. So 
now it's inputting and now it's outputting so if we go over this with a bucket we should see that it's letting it go here and this one should now not be moving at all and it should be filling up this system so if we were to input the chemical thrower it would actually fill it up right now so we're gonna do that and we can just I think we can actually we can't throw it on there so we do need to add one conveyor belt so I do want to grab some more stone brick down here just so that it matches everything up there and we can get some stone just to make some more if we need it so we can put one right here and we can add the conveyor belt like this and rotate it so there we go and all we have to do is get out our chemical thrower and toss it right on there and it kind of hooks it up in here and once we run power to this thing it will start actually working and it'll fill it up and then we can use it so we do have to input power right up here should be easy enough to click it on there and we can run some electrum wire over here and it should start going so you can see it goes around here you get to watch the cool animation and it should be full and then it's going to spit it out we'll hook a chest up over here in a bit but we can take a look now at the gauge and it says it is full so it actually uses up a decent amount uh, if we take a look in the engineering manual we can actually find the chemical thrower in here and you can see it says that you can toggle to make things flammable um, you can add some upgrades to it and I believe it says that it, I thought it said it used 20 millibuckets per tick. I read that somewhere. Uh, it might have been on the wiki, but it does use up a good amount of stuff. We can right click it and you can see it does shoot that and it goes down pretty quick on the gauge. But now we get to turn the fire on and hopefully this doesn't actually light things on fire. Like if we were to shoot it at wood, I don't know, but you can see it does shoot fire. So let's just let's verify that it doesn't actually light anything on fire. Yep, okay, so now we can run out here, find Mr. Zombie, and I'll show you guys how ineffective this is. So it does light him on fire, and look at that. Look at how ineffective that is. Uh, one thing that is nice, though, is that you can kill things like pigs with it or chickens, and obviously it lights them on fire, so then it already cooks all the stuff. So if you're out and about and you want to have some you know, steak or cooked pork, you can just shoot it with this, and it will be good to go. So now, obviously, you know, if we wanted it again, we could just throw it back in there. It would refill it, and it would start draining from the top barrel right over here, which they're both now empty. I actually don't know what the internal storage is for this, but I guess it must be pretty darn big. So we can just keep filling this thing up. And obviously, I, I'm going to manually fill it up for now. I was having some trouble. I tested out automatically pulling creosote out of this, and I wasn't able to get it using the fluid pump or any of the uh, actual fluid uh, fluid pipes tried all the sides tried pretty much everything I could think of and couldn't get it to come out automatically but I don't think we're gonna be using this too much so I'm not super worried about having the creosote you know automatically get put into it so if we really wanted to you know we could just come over here and manually move it and then throw it in the top one and hopefully we will accumulate a pretty nice buffer in here but now that we have this set up we can just add a chest on to this far side over here and it should automatically input it into the chest when it's done and we can just verify that it actually does that by throwing it in there again and if it's full it doesn't really matter it'll just kind of send it through into the final chest and I love that animation it makes when it's filling it up but it should put it right into this chest right here and there we go so you can see it says that it's got 2000 out of 2000 mill buckets and unfortunately I actually don't have any more steel to make the additions to this but you can add um, two different things to it as far as I'm aware you can add the focus nozzle which decreases the spread and increases the range and you can also add the large tank which increases the internal tank size like I said it doubles it so that's another 2,000 millibuckets not too much to it you kind of burn through stuff really quick but it's still nice to have and we can check just to see if there's yeah so it looks like these are the only two upgrades it does give you three slots for upgrades but you can't really duplicate or you can't uh, add any more of these you can't double up on any of them uh, and like I said to add that you do need to have the engineers workbench it's the same thing that you need to add to the mining drill the revolver all that sort of stuff it's really easy to make and I'll make this off camera and just kind of set things up and upgrade it a little bit so that next time we mess around with the chemical thrower uh, it's at its at its most effective 
Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, feel free to give it a like. And obviously, uh, if you're watching this episode right when it went up, it is Christmas Day. So I hope you guys are all having a phenomenal Christmas. And Merry Christmas to you or Happy Holidays.